Okay, welcome to the Chaos OSPO Metrics Working Group meeting for May 2nd. As a reminder, we do operate under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please be kind to each other. The question of the day is, if you could bring back any fashion trend or old slang, what would it be? Mine is 60s slang because it's groovy. Cockney rhyming slang, that's a good one. Rad. Cheaper tailored suits. Okay, Remy. You always look so nice. You you always have those nice nice suits. Um, so now we just need to make them cheaper for you. Oh, I say you're always wearing those nice suits and you're in a hoodie today. I don't, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to run the meeting today. Uh, Gary had a, a conflict just with this one. Uh, so we, as a reminder, we do have a poll to rename the bus factor metric. Um, we don't operate by consensus, so there may be reasons that we wouldn't take the winner, especially if the poll got gamed, but the poll will remain open through the end of the week. Uh, I encourage you to read the discussion in this issue before you vote in the poll, and then there's a link to to vote in the poll, so you can pick your favorite alternative to uh, the bus factor, which is a bit uh, morbid. Um, any questions on the bus factor metric renaming? Also, naming is hard. Remy. One of the things that I heard a lot at OSSNA was that Nebraska factor is starting to come into uh, into mode. I'm not sure if that's already claimed namespace for some other metric within chaos, but I don't mind it as an alternative. And now everybody really has the Nebraska XKCD drilled into their head. So I don't see it in the poll, but I thought I would bring it up as like, a, is Nebraska factor already taken? Okay. Why don't you drop that comment on the issue so we don't lose it? Uh, that would be super helpful. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if it's sort of taken or not. We'll think about it. Any other questions on the renaming? Okay. I am super excited to announce that the practitioner guides, what used to be called the insight guides, have just launched yesterday. So we launched with the first four guides. So thank you so much to everybody who contributed. So we've had lots of lots of contributions and lots of comments and feedback. Now that does not need to stop. So these are all on GitHub. So you can continue to contribute to them. So if you see something that maybe isn't quite right or you have some additional ideas, you can go ahead and add to the four guides that are already published. And then we also have uh, issues where we're always looking for people to develop new guides. So if there are some guides that you're interested in developing and the, the website and the blog post, I think both link to uh, where you can contribute. So that's in the data science working group repository. So uh, if you'd like to share them with your friends and colleagues on your favorite social media sites, that would be that would be cool too. We'd appreciate that because we do want people to use these. That's the whole point of having them. Any questions on the practitioner guides? I guess I could, I could click on that so you can see what that looks like. So you can see we've launched with the, the first four. Any questions on that? Cool. Now, some of you may have seen Matt's Slack message about the OSPO book. So uh, we're very excited that this week he's gotten that into a state where it's actually readable from, from start to finish. So Matt's, Matt's not here today, but Alice and I promised to, to talk a little bit about this. Um, so he's encouraging people to leave comments in, in the doc. So you can, you can see the doc is, is right here. Um, so there are already some some comments and suggestions. And uh, yeah, so go ahead and just make any comments and suggestions in, in the document. Also, we do need to have a, a case, uh, like a use case at the end. So we are looking for and, and I will say, I'll, I'll jump to a, a later agenda item. In general, we would love to have more case studies 
things from people who are actually using our software, our metrics, our processes, um, any of it, to put together just sort of an example of, of what, you've, what you've done with uh, some of the work that we have here in Chaos. So we'll turn one of those into a, a use case for, um, for the book chapter. So if anybody is interested in that, I would recommend that you uh, either let me know, reach out directly to Matt, uh, drop a comment right here in the doc that you're you're interested. And that would be um, that would be super, super helpful. And then Alice, you had more to talk about for for the OSPO book. Maybe I'll just turn it over over to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so just to follow on from what you were saying, Dawn, um, use cases are definitely very welcome. Um, none of the other chapters actually have like fully fledged use cases. They have more of sort of scenarios and recommendations, which can be fairly generalized. So um, there are, you know, there will be uh, use cases or, or case studies, I should say, um, but it, it shouldn't be a blocker on getting the chapter done is what I would say about that. Um, I did have a couple of other things just to share with you. Um, first of all, is that we are now using a, or we're trialing out using a Kanban board, uh, which is a GitHub project um, for managing the editorial process for the OSPO book. Um, so I'm just working on that. Uh, I stood up, maybe it might have even been this morning or yesterday. Um, and it shows you, we've got a number of, if you're not familiar with Kanban, it's basically um, for, for processes, you can um, put cards into different stages of the process and assign them to different people. Um, and it helps to work, work more asynchronously to be able to move the pieces of work around. Um, in this case, I've got um, chapter four and chapter five in here. Chapter five is the one that relates to metrics. Um, and you'll see that there's a parent issue um, in that write and edit column, which is the second one down. Um, this is the second issue in that column. <laughs> um, and then, thanks Dawn, and then you can see there are sections, uh, chapter sections underneath that. And, and the reason that, that that's been broken out like that is just to allow different people to have different parts of the chapter assigned to them because often it's a quite collaborative effort and people will like to, you know, work on recommendations but maybe not right at the same time as they're writing on the main text so it helps to be able to move one part into review and then put and bring it back into the editing column when the review's been completed and there's some feedback so um definitely uh come take a look at this i wrote i recorded a video as well just to explain uh what i've said but with a little bit more detail so the intro video just below um it's probably going to become a little out of date as we start to use the board and fine tune the process a bit more. But for now, uh, I'd love you to start interacting with the board if you are working on, on the book and let me know if it doesn't make sense to you or you think that the process could be improved or the board could be improved and we'll, we'll um, do what we can. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Any questions about the, the book chapter? or the OSPO book in general. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are looking for case studies. So Remy's uh, put a link in there. So that's that's a definite definite possibility. Um, we've also, I'll just, I'll just throw Gary under the bus because he's not here today. Um, we've also talked about maybe uh, Gary because we just recorded a, a podcast with him uh, earlier this week where we basically talked about all the ways that they're using uh, chaos metrics and tools. So so that's another another possibility. Um, and I don't know if Microsoft Mike. Wow, can't talk today. Microsoft is interested. I see James on the line because uh, we did do a podcast with with you all earlier, so we could even use some of some of that content if you were interested in doing a doing a case study. Sure. Um, what What's the timeline on that? That's really our biggest crunch right now. Um, I would say that there's 
not a huge timeline because we're interested in doing case studies uh, just on an ongoing basis for the chaos sure. project. Um, we will need one for the for the book, but um, as Alice said, we don't necessarily need to to hold anything up for that. So, okay, um, yeah, let me let me talk to the team and then uh, we'll we'll sync back. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts on case studies or interested in doing a case study? Okay. Um, market value of outbound open source. I'm not sure who added this to the agenda. Ah, oh, Lucas. Sort of. So uh, Georg is actually the one who added this to, to the agenda. Uh, and since he's not here, I will channel. Um, we were talking about um, the role of community health uh, in uh, biz in commercial open source, in corporate open source, and um, and we um, started talking about um, coming up with really strong answers about the the business value of a project. How do you measure it? How do you describe it? How do you make that case to, um, as he wrote here, to a revenue officer? Um, and the idea came up that to do and chaos together um, have exactly the right incentives to think about this. Um, so to give an example of some practical things, um, here are some metrics uh, that I created for one of my clients. So I'm a freelance OSPO person, for people who don't know. So I have several corporate clients that I help with these things. And so some metrics I worked with them on is um, tracking business value that the OSPO is creating. Uh, and um, <clears throat> one particular metric we had was compliance problems that have been addressed. Right, in a sense that is business value because it is making risk go away and other things. So that's kind of where this stood and and how we arrived having this conversation within this community. So I'm curious what what other people think. How do you how do you look at market value of the outbound open source efforts? And how do you make that case to the folks who care about money, Remy. So we're in a, we're in a safe space. So I feel comfortable talking about plans. I don't always like to talk publicly about stuff we're going to do. I'd rather talk about stuff we have done, but these are the homies here. So uh, I think it has been recorded just as a reminder. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this summer, uh, we have identified the Augur uh, Kokomo endpoint as one that we are going to be uh, targeting for our summer intern work. Kokomo is a somewhat rudimentary way of calculating the value of source code, where you take basically a number of commits and you estimate the person time that would go into it, and you allocate a salary number to go with it. So you can start to say, this is how much effort has gone into developing this thing. And this is how much it would cost at this market rate. So uh, we are interested in starting to gather that and put that somewhere where we can track it over time. Uh, and we do weekly metrics. So doing a week by week analysis and saying like, hey, it looks like the Kokomo number has gone up or down or um, making sure that that is there. And that's already an auger endpoint, which is great. Uh, it turns out that there's a tool called SCC, I believe. Isaac or Natalia can probably correct me, but that's the tool I think under the hood that Augur uses. So it has a command line component where you can do some source code analysis and that will give you some of the, uh, the results that come out of it. Um, I have somewhere an example of what that output looks like. I'll see if I can dump it in the channel. But that's one of the ways we're we're starting to approach value, and it's not the whole picture. Kokomo is like a very specific way of doing that uh, kind of estimation, but we think it's a good place to start, and we'll continue uh, finding other lenses to view value through and demonstrate business value. How about others?
Microsoft's working on similar, uh, but I don't have enough to share yet, but it is something that we're thinking about. So I'll just put that out there. I think that um, this is a question that is central to all of our um, all of our uh, um, jobs, uh, and coming up with really good answers uh, is important, and it can be um, subtle. Um, so um, even just saying Microsoft is thinking about this and doesn't yet have something is valuable. It kind of goes towards you know the urgency. Alyssa, it looked like you were about to say something. Yeah, I was also going to say that that this is something that we've been looking at in, on the Bloomberg side as well. Yeah, and it's something that's hard. I know we've we've talked about some of these challenges before, either in this meeting or maybe in some uh, to do group calls. But it's it's one of those things that you you have to be a little bit careful about how you do this because people get into a poking holes. Um, approach pretty quickly where you know your engineers look at whatever you whatever you use to do this and they're like oh well that doesn't make any sense uh so we're going to completely disregard it so so you have to be uh, a bit diligent i think about how you how you do this and be be ready for the the questions that you're going to get and be ready for for people saying that they want to just throw the whole thing out because they don't agree with maybe one particular component of it Any other thoughts on this? One form of business value is the ability to influence markets to go in directions that are um, advantageous to the company. Anyway, I wonder what would good follow-ups be? I know there's a lot going on. People have their own agendas. It's a busy day for all of us. What's a good way to follow up on this? Remy. Another place that, um, sorry if this doesn't answer your question directly, um, but the another place where value is demonstrated with the OSPO is the talent pipeline. Recruiting mm -hmm. is definitely one of the most important ways that uh, you can bring people uh, into the organization and contributions aren't just code. So that's something that we definitely track, you know, new, new contributors, new contributions, but also full-time hires and interns. And, um, you know, the people side of it is a really crucial benefit of having a central strategy. So talent metrics are, I think, you know, software is not necessary. It's made of people just as much as it's made of code. So people metrics are a really important thing to, to raise to the business and say, this is one of the things that you get. And then there's always the vanity metrics and, uh, you know, talking about visibility and, um, you know, exposure and public relations and, you know, blog posts and articles and social media traffic. Not to say that that's all vanity, but um, it's to say that it's easy to measure and uh, is oftentimes uh, important for different stakeholders because it's easy to understand. Um, and a lot of people can say, yeah, I get it. What's a what's a tweet is understandable, but what's a commit may not necessarily be understandable for an exec. So, um, you know, those are the kinds of things in the the heat, light, and love categories. Uh, heat is the commits and the activity. Light is the visibility and public stuff, and love is the contributions and the people. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. That was uh, that was an interesting discussion. And to Lucas's point about where do where do we go next? I mean, I think this is something we can continue to think about and maybe you know talk about again in a uh, future meeting as as some people have had time to make progress on this. Uh, you know, maybe maybe Microsoft or Bloomberg. Once you get a little bit further on on your path, maybe you can come in and tell us what's what's working, what's not, um, and kind of how it's how it's going for you as well as others. Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda, OSSNA highlights. So we had, uh, we had a chaos con and a visualization workshop. 
I attended both of them. I thought they both were really good. Um, I don't know what other people what other people think. If you had a favorite favorite part of either Chaos Con or the visualization workshop that you want to talk about. Aside from hanging out and getting to talk to each other in person, which is always which is always fun. One of the things I, I really liked during chaos con itself was the the workshops that we did where we just sat down and started working on a metrics model and so we're starting to bring those metrics models into the the working group meetings, so I would encourage you if you're interested in and in working on some metrics models or some metrics to pop into uh, one of those meetings that would be. Uh, that would be useful. So I thought that was, uh, I, I enjoyed that part of it. I'm curious what other people have to think. It's a quiet group today. I don't know what it is. It feels like other meetings I've been in have been the same way. It feels like, I don't know. People are very quiet today. Are people, are we burning out? <laughs> I don't know. That, that was one of the metrics models, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm just trying to make it to Friday. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all. Yeah, I will. I will jump in and say I had a. I had a lot. It, it chaos con is always valuable to me. Um, it is a lot of fun, and I, I just find there's nothing one thing in particular, but just being in a room with people that are paying attention to some of the same stuff, and it helps me actually prioritize how to, I, I like that it's at the beginning of the open source North America conferences, because it helps me um, kind of prioritize how to navigate the rest of the, the week. So um, yeah, there was not, not one piece, but I guess all of it that I enjoyed. Yeah, I'd agree with Alyssa on that. I, I love that point of like having it be a co-located event before the conference on day zero really set it up nicely for me to start thinking through how do I want my week to look like and what are things that I should start looking for and thinking of and I'm thinking of all of like oh is this talking to give me metrics that I should be considering and bring and potentially bring it back to my team and back to chaos um, so that's one thing that I, I love about um, chaos con And also, I, I I do appreciate the fact that it's like, oh, I just like sitting in a room with people I like. And I think that's kind of these calls, too. I think, um, like, even when I'm silent in these calls, it's like, oh, I join because I know I like it. And I know I'm going to hear good things. And even though we're silent, we all know we came here because we like each other. <laughs> yeah, plus one to that, for sure. Okay, and then OSCON, it's oh, sorry, OSPOCON and or the rest of OSSNA, we had some really, uh, really good talks from uh, some of the folks in, in this group. Uh, there were a couple of talks that uh, Remy's team was involved in, um, along with Microsoft, and then a few of us did a panel with with Gary about viability metrics. So I thought, uh, I thought all of those were were pretty interesting. I don't know if anybody has anything that they want to say in particular about those we've included the the links to the youtube videos which until somebody started putting in there i didn't actually realize the youtube videos were up already so that was super helpful thank you okay um i also wanted to just a uh, quick promo that ed did a episode of chaos cast with us and that went out earlier today so i've included the link there uh, we don't really need to talk about it I just encourage you to go and uh have have a listen if you're interested in uh ed's perspectives on um yeah various aspects of the the chaos project including you know some deep dives into kind of more of the infrastructure side because that's obviously where uh equinix plays so it was interesting to hear some of his insights 
on on that piece of of metrics. Um, Alice, I think you're up next. Yeah, I just sneaked something in there. I I don't know if this is um, necessarily something we need to discuss. I'm not. So I'm not totally sure if this is the right place to say it, but something did pop up in in the Slack, and I thought, let me just get the, get it out there and see see whether we want to talk about it more or not. Um, and I I should find out who wrote this so I could credit them, but I didn't have it to hand. Um, there are two uh, metrics related um, commercial products that have recently been acquired by larger companies and are being shut down. So I suspect that there will be people who are looking around for how do I get metrics on my um, communities essentially for various reasons um, and they may come to our door and, and say you know how do you what do you do and how, how does what you do fit with what I'm looking for um, and I think it, it could be a great opportunity to welcome some some new folks into the community and, and think about whether there are new use cases that we're not thinking about already. So okay. I, I just wanted to raise it so I don't, I don't have a question per se other than just to, to see if anyone else had noticed it and, and had thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because I had not noticed either either of these, frankly. Um, I'm kind of sad to see Orbit shutting down. Yeah. Um, not that I, I really, I really kind of liked. I liked their model, and I liked the way that they they did certain things where they had uh, community members kind of they had kind of an onion model where community members there there was like a decay function, um, and so they were doing some interesting things with metrics. So that's I guess a little bit disappointing. I'm curious if any does anybody use it or have used in the past either of these tools? No, but I'm gonna check them out now. Well, don't because they're going away. It's too late. Oh, I've missed the train. <laughs> but I do think it would be good to, you know, f become familiar with them and see how much overlap there is and whether, because it seems to me like it would be a great, uh, it would be valuable to the users of that, of, that, of that community if we could say those, these specific things that you were getting from those tools can actually be achieved through Grimoire Labs or Orga. And and you know it might it might not be a full um, replacement, but it could be like a partial replacement, and they may be you know out there looking. So yeah, if anyone feels like going to check out the tools before they disappear, then that could be great. Or if you know anyone um, that uses them, yeah, I'd love to to hear what they think about them. Yeah, and I know some people have looked in particular at Orbit in the past, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how recently. It's also not entirely clear like which bits of their offering are going to be incorporated into the um, the larger, you know, product or, or company. To, you know which features or, or parts of the product because they're definitely shutting down the the original SaaS products. So, but I guess something in the underlying technology is maybe being used, or who knows? I guess they're not going to tell us straight away anyway. <laughs> Any other thoughts on on either of those? It might be interesting, Alice, to also bring this up during the community meeting on Tuesday, if you're going to be there, because there might be, that might be where some of the folks who've looked at Orbit in the past will be. I'd be curious, I'd be curious about their, their perspective on it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Remy. I just, pardon my ignorance, can I just get a quick explainer on what Orbit does or what they're, what they provided as far as metrics or service? I don't know that we have, have any orbit experts to answer that question. Uh, they, they had a they had a solution um, 
yeah, I, they used to have a repo. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Um, so it looks like maybe the open source bits are still out there. I don't know if they're really. Sorry, I, oh, okay. I can Google it. I didn't mean to take the meeting off. I was hoping somebody would be like, they do metrics for API calls or they do metrics for how many people joined your thing and just give like a one liner. But yeah, they, apparently they, they, were, they were bought by Postman and they're, uh, they uh, were apparently an API telemetry startup a while back. Uh, Justin just sent me this information. Yeah, that makes sense if they're going to Postman. So cool. All right. Thanks. Yeah. And historically, when we looked at them, they were, um, kind of focused on on community data so um and analyzing sort of the people like the people that you're attracting within your community they had an interesting decay function for the people who are disappearing so you know over over time if people make fewer and fewer contributions and and spotlighting some of that so that's the only thing that i know from from orbit was about how they dealt with kind of attracting and retaining and then you know, the contributors that you're losing as well. Like CRM, but it's like contributor relations management. God, I never looked at it in much detail. News to me. Interesting. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get sidetracked if I keep doing that. <laughs> All right, we have reached the end of our two more minutes. Does anybody have anything that they want to talk about? James, you have a very loud keyboard. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, I'm not going to object to not running the meeting all the way to the to the very end. Um, so so thank you everyone for for coming um, and and thank you so much for the for the discussion. Thanks, John. Thank all right, you. thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.